I would like to talk to you for a minute about how to save the American economy. He said, it's not possible. Uh, we keep raising interest rates and it makes, uh, keeps inflation lower, but then nobody can afford to buy anything with debt because the inflation or the in interest rates are too high. Um, well, then if we lower the interest rates, we pivot, the, the Fed pivots, then inflation starts to go up and, they, and you know, we have a liquidity crisis right now. People are holding on to their money. And so they need to print more money to keep money in circulation, but that causes hyperinflation. So uh, how do we fix the economy in America? Very simple. War and death. If you've seen my other video about the Civil War coming, um, war and death would fix the economy. I'm not suggesting that. I'm saying I'm giving you a scientific fact. War and death always helps the economy. How so? Less people equals more resources, doesn't it? I mean, we don't have enough houses for all the people in America. What are we going to do? Well, if there's a war and lots of death, there'd be a lot more houses. I mean, detach your emotion from the facts. Would it happen that way? Would it work that way? Less people means more resources. Oh, there's food shortages. There's uh, supply chain breakdowns. Well, if you have less people, does it matter? No. Um, if there's more, uh, you don't need to print more money, I'll say it that way, if there's less people. Hmm. You say, what is that? Well, uh, study the military industrial complex. Look that up. Um, I think it was uh, Truman or whatever. I um, can't remember if it was Truman or Eisenhower. One of the two. And he warned about the... Uh, uh, misplaced power in the military industrial complex. We must gar guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military industrial complex. You know, in other words, war is a racket. General Smedley Butler said that. And uh, war is a good way for them to make money. So um, the military industrial complex can come in and all of a sudden, hey, we need lots of guns, we need uniforms, we need tanks, we need airplanes, we need rocket launchers, we need, you know, grenades, we need all kinds of things like that. It gets a lot of people working again. So if the economy stalls, you bring in war, and all of a sudden, things are going very well again. And I'm saying this stuff somewhat in a sort of a sarcastic manner, imagine that, um, because I'm trying to get people to realize where we're going. Anybody's telling you we're heading for good times, the economy's robust and all this stuff? No, it's not. We're not heading for good good times. We're heading for war and death. All right. Um, and again, like I said, rebuilding infrastructure, military industrial complex. Uh, lots of things are destroyed and blown up and whatever else. It's going to create jobs, military industrial complex. Do you understand? It's not just about bombs and bullets and guns. It's also about rebuilding infrastructure. Hey, we need new roads going through this area here. We need to build a factory over here in this town. Let's get this done. Let's get that done. It would create employment. Uh, just saying. Let me get my Bible here real quick. I'm going to share a verse of scripture with you. Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22. Sorry about that. Pointing down. Um, I mean, it's just... You know, the old saying goes, the only thing that men learn from history is that men never learn from history. Uh, it's very true. People say, well, it'll, it will be different this time. Don't worry. And other times, yeah, okay, uh, you know, we went to war, and yeah, there was some war, and a lot of people died. But this time, I, I th I'd like to think that we're more civilized now. Uh, well, you might like to think it, but that's not reality. And I hear people, and they say, oh, I, I hope we don't go to war. I uh, one thing I'm really worried about, I'm really scared about, is war. I just, oh, war just scares me. Oh, uh, well, then you're scared by reality. Study history. There's been wars every century. I mean, show me a, a period of 100 years of peace. I mean, the 20th century, oh, it was a pretty good time. No, it was actually the bloodiest century in history in terms of total amount of casualties, um, you know, through... Democide, you know, the government's killing their own people and, and uh, wars and everything else. It was the bloodiest time in history, the 20th century. But the Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22, in my little miniature Bible here, says, 
Um, a good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. Um, we have some promises in the scriptures, and uh, I do believe the body of Christ is heading for the catching up where we will be leaving and going to be with the Lord, but we might be here for a few years yet. So um, the economy is not very good right now. And if there's war, it might actually be a fairly decent thing for the body of Christ, for those who survive that war. Um, the Lord can get you through it, and the Lord can actually make things better economically. Just saying. So uh, let's not fall for this thing of, you know, oh, I hope that there's no war. Oh, that would just be a terrible thing. Oh, I can't, I can't fathom it. Oh, no, what would we do? Um, ooh, snow's kind of deep in some spots. Uh, I'm not saying we should want war in terms of, uh, you know, really try to instigate things and try to get people killed and whatever else. No, I'm just saying understand the reality of it and don't fight that. Don't fight against it. So, hopefully I made some sense with this video. Just some thoughts on my mind. Um, uh, just, I'm getting really sick and tired of the economic stuff that's going on in this country. It just, it boggles my mind how uh, people just will not stop spending. There's just all this debt. The banking system is collapsing. They're, the FDIC is lying about, you know, being able to insure people's you know deposits that they have they they had to be bailed out by the federal reserve here um i mean just i'm so sick and tired of the wickedness of this nation um as a preacher uh, i've been preaching repentance for years of uh, going back to 2007 and um i've seen this nation get so much worse um over the years since 2007 and i know that the only way to really solve this problem right now is war. That's the only way. Um, people aren't going to turn back to the Lord. Uh, they've had plenty of time. The Bible talks about God, you know, giving people space to repent. He gives people time. He's long suffering. He's gracious. He's merciful. But then that runs out after a while. And um, quite frankly, I hope it runs out. So, um, I guess that will be it for this video. Uh, be very careful what you fall for going forward. Um, a lot of preachers, like I said in the last video, they're going to go completely along with the alt-right thing. and They're going to be, you know, snapping their heels together and yelling, Heil Hitler. Uh, I can guarantee that. So that is going to be it. See you in the next video. Only an alert and knowledgeable citizenry can compel the proper meshing of the huge industrial and military machinery of defense with our peaceful methods and goals so that security and liberty may prosper together.